All right, guys, how's it going? December was a roller coaster of a month for me. It all started off great with this huge, by my standards, video on the Ryzen 3000 leak. After that, I had expected a more relaxing month, but with hindsight, that was a rather questionable piece of analysis. I was halfway through the script of a fun video on gaming when I was forced to address some equally questionable analysis of my Ryzen leak. So the fun video was delayed due to that. Then around the same time, Intel held their architecture day for the tech press. So the fun gaming video got delayed again, as I moved on to the more serious matter of the Intel stuff. I tried for days to get a video out on that, but by mid-December I think I'd already started on my holiday season break, at least in my head. I couldn't concentrate on it at all. I just couldn't get it started properly, let alone finished. And I didn't realise it until a couple of days ago, but I'd been harbouring a cold virus for most of the month, I believe. And I'm pretty sure you may be able to detect it in my voice. Thankfully, December is also, generally speaking, the quietest month in tech. But over the last few days, we've had a few interesting talking points, which I've decided to delve into for my last video of 2018. I'll start over at WCCF Tech and Usman has received confirmation that AMD will be launching, note the emphasis there, three classes of product at their CES keynote. The Ryzen 3000 series CPUs, which was the stuff I leaked, the Ryzen 3000 series APUs with Vega graphics and a consumer Radeon graphics card which he speculates is the Radeon Vega 2. I emphasise the words launching and speculates there because over the last few weeks, it's become clear to me that some people appear to be confused as to what they're being told. Before I continue with that article, let me go back to my leak video and highlight everything I said regarding Ryzen 3000's timing. Most of the normal chips, the ones without the GPUs, should be announced at CES in a month's time. However, the G chips are coming much later in the third quarter of 2019. That makes sense from the perspective of Navi 12 not yet being manufactured or maybe having just started mass production. And looking at the TDPs of the Ryzen 5s, the 3600, which apparently may still end up getting Ryzen 5 3400 branding, is a 65 watt TDP chip. 3600X is a 95 watts chip, again, both being revealed at CES. The star of the show is obviously the 3850X, or 3850 whatever they end up calling it. And of course, this highest end Ryzen 9 part will be announced or launched in May. Apparently, there will be three Navi-based GPUs announced at CES. So you clearly heard of the wording that I used. I used the word announced three times, revealed once, and the only time launched was mentioned, I said, announced or launched in May. So anyone who claims I said Ryzen or Navi was launching at CES is either mistaken or has an agenda. That is their mistake or their agenda. My wording was unambiguous throughout. For that very reason. Back to WCCF though, and starting with the 3000 series APUs. The new APUs with Vega graphics are gonna be Zen Plus architecture and fabbed on 12 nanometers, while the new CPUs in my leak are of course the Zen 2 architecture fabbed on 7 nanometers. This may be somewhat confusing as both of them have the 3000 series branding, but it's not unusual to have different segments, architectures and process nodes with the same branding. In fact, we currently have that with the Ryzen 2000 series, in which the desktop APUs, stuff like your 2400G here, and of course your 2200G, those are 14 nanometer chips, and also mobile chips like your 2700U, that also is still 14 nanometers, while all the desktop chips like your 2700X, they moved on to 12 nanometer FinFET, yet all of them have the same Ryzen 2000 branding. Recall also the recent leak over at Reddit suggesting 12 nanometer APUs with Ryzen 3000 series branding. You had a Zen Plus 12 nanometer Ryzen 5 3500G and a Zen Plus 12 nanometers Ryzen 3 3300G. Those are clearly the 2400G and 2200G, simply rebranded on the 12 nanometer process. My leak had the Ryzen 3 3300G and the Ryzen 5 3600G. So there is space there to fit desktop APUs in as the 3500G, the 3400G and the 3200G. 
These seven nanometer parts, though, remember, will not be launched until the third quarter of 2019. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do see maybe a 12 nanometer 3500G in there. I think so long as it's branded as Ryzen 3 and not Ryzen 5, that's just about forgivable. My preference though would be that both the Ryzen 5 2400G and the Ryzen 3 2200G are rebranded as Ryzen 3's 3400Gs and 3200Gs. It's fine for the mobile and the ultra low power parts to get the higher numbers, suffixed as M and U, like we see here with the Ryzen 7 3700U leaked last month. That's all okay. Note that the 2000 series desktop APUs, that's the 14 nanometer 2400 and 2200 Gs, were announced at CES 2018 on the January, then launched just over a month later. So there's one potential difference between the announcement and launch. But enough of these incredibly boring parts. The big news here is Usman's confirmation on the real Ryzen 3000 series, which is of course Zen 2 on 7 nanometers. Now many of you have been wondering what exactly AMD will be doing at CES. The fact here is, it's just too hard to say exactly when the actual launch of these will be. We can see by this slide from the last CES that the 12 nanometer second generation Ryzen was introduced at CES to be launched in April. We didn't get a whole lot of extra details other than it would have higher clock speeds and precision boost too. But remember, this was three months out from the actual launch. And it got me thinking hard about what AMD will likely do at this upcoming CES. If we start simply by looking at the hardware specs, they clearly have a crushing core advantage over Intel. Where it gets difficult for them though is in showing exactly what to reveal right now and what to hold back for later. They for sure have all of these parts available for demonstration at CES if they want to show their full hand. As you know, my leak suggested that they'll hold back the announcement of the fastest part until May for the 50th anniversary but they'll also really want to show their best against the 9900K at CES. The entire tech world watching on as AMD's fastest desktop CPU finishes Cinebench in half the time of Intel's fastest desktop CPU. You have to understand the mindshare that is up for grabs here. Chances like this cannot be passed up. There has to be a demonstration. I guess though the 3800X will still be a mile ahead of the 9900K, so we could get that instead, with the anniversary 3850X getting no mention yet. For me though, the most likely course of action would be for AMD to show the 3850X's performance, but not mention any clock speeds or model names. So basically, an unspecified Ryzen 9 branded CPU versus Intel's i9 9900K. We might get core counts too, but I do not expect clock speeds to be revealed at CES. There is an issue too in that their own current Ryzen 2000 series CPUs could be Osborne. That is, if the Ryzen 3000 is so much further ahead, people may hold off on buying anything until it's available. However, we're in a market situation where absolutely everything sells, even at Intel's prices. So it doesn't matter about that. There is no chance in the current market shortage that any CPU won't sell. And on top of that, 88% of CPUs being Osborne will be Intel CPUs. Ask yourself what people are more likely to hold off on buying if AMD shows that Cinebench demo I just talked about. Next up a slight change of focus as just before the WCCF Tech article launched, we caught wind of what looks like the first Ryzen 3000 engineering sample. Coming from Apisac over at Twitter, who's quite a prolific discoverer of these samples, there weren't a lot of details, simply this tweet. But anyone who's paying attention to AMD's CPU codenames can spot one a mile away and know what to do with it next. So we run it through Marvin at MoPC.net's excellent AMD codename decoder and get this. Starting off with 5 and going over to video cards who caught wind of a ROM CPU engineering sample a few weeks ago, which started with 2. Engineering samples are of course what are sent out during sampling and used for testing before the chips are ready for mass production. So we believe that the 5 here for this Ryzen chip means it's a late or very recent engineering sample. As we can see here, the prototype generation. D stands for desktop, that one's simple enough. That includes Ryzen and Threadripper, which is why we know that this chip 
is a rising chip. 010. Past leaks have shown this number to be the base clock of the chip. Back before Ryzen 1 launched, Canard PC got an engineering sample which began with 2D315. So that's an engineering sample 1 for the desktop which had a base clock of 3.15 GHz. In this case though, 010 makes no sense at all for a base clock. That would be 100 MHz, which is far too low. What can it be instead? I don't know. Next up is 8, the model revision. Seemingly quite high again, like the first number. The latest ROM leak was a 4 here. Next up is BB, which means it is 65 watts. We can see this related to TDP and VRM setup. BB, 65 watts. So this is a 65 watt chip. M stands for AM4. 8 is 8 cores. S is the cache configuration. And I'll get to that point soon. And H2 is the stepping. And this is how we believe it must be a Zen 2 chip, as the previous ROM engineering sample leak shows G5. If we look back at Zen 1 engineering samples, we can see that E and F were used for A and B stepping chips. For example, E4 was an A stepping, and F3, F4 were B stepping. So now we've seen G5 for ROM, and more recently H2 for Ryzen 3000. Does that mean it's the same chiplet? Still not sure on that. The G5 ROM sample had very low clocks of 1.4 GHz base and 2 GHz boost. And if you recall a video a couple of months ago when I was told that ROM was an A silicon but B was coming, then this H2 stepping here could well be that B revision. At the very end we see this underscore 37 which stands for 3.7 GHz clock speed. There would normally be two values here and the first one is normally the boost. And in the example we can see 40 slash 36. So that would be 4 GHz boost and a 3.6 GHz base. However, in the case of the Apisac leak, only one is being shown. The question here then is, is it the base clock or is it the boost clock? Feel free to choose depending on whatever god you believe in. For me, the idea of having an engineering sample that only had a variable boost clock doesn't make much sense. But having one with a stable base clock does. Similarly, having a 3.7 GHz boost clock chip at 65 watts on 7 nanometers, when they already have a 4.1 GHz boost clock chip, which would be the Ryzen 7 2700, on 12 nanometers, 65 watt TDP 4.1 GHz boost, that doesn't make any sense either. So if we're indeed looking at a 3.7 GHz base clock at only 65 watts, then that is 16% higher than the 2700 at the same 65 watts TDP. Alternatively, we can look at the 2700X and it would have the same 3.7 GHz base clock, but that is at a 105 watt TDP, which is 62% higher for the same performance. Now, there was some confusion over the cache and I got involved in some discussions with a couple of people over this, including with the creator of the decoder. After a couple of days of head scratching, he figured out that one of the OPN code letters had changed. And we can see that down here in the latest version 4.2 of the decoder. But due to that, we now know that this Ryzen 3000 engineering sample has a massive 32 megabytes of L3 cache. Of course, my leak suggested that it may be two four core chiplets. And in this case, each would have 16 megabytes of L3. It could, of course, still be one single monolithic chip with the whole 32 megabytes of L3. But it just made me realize how many options AMD has here. If the Ryzen die isn't the same chiplet as the Epic one, they could have saved die space by keeping 16 megabyte of L3, same as the current generation Ryzen, rather than increasing to 32 meg on the die. To get 32 megabyte, you simply just need to use two chips, same as with the current Threadripper. But if each chip does have 32 megabytes of L3 cache each, the highest end parts, like the Ryzen 7s and the Ryzen 9s, they would have 64 megabyte of L3 cache, while these lowest end salvage parts could still have as little as 16 megabytes. There are other ways to segment your lineup apart from core counts and SMT. But regardless of whether that's true or not, this does appear to be the first major evidence of Ryzen 3000 in the wild, and it is very likely to be 8 cores, 3.7 GHz base clock, 32 megabytes of L3 cache, 
at only 65 watts of TDP, it is very close to my Ryzen 5 3600. In fact, it's just slightly ahead of my leak, which suggested 3.6 GHz base clock at the same 65 watts TDP. That though is simply a marketing decision. AMD can easily drop 0.1 GHz off of that, and that will allow them to get more 3600s from the same number of wafers. Now getting back to the graphics, and there's been a fair bit of speculation recently on an incoming Vega 2 GPU as well, which started off with some new entries in a Linux patch, and then we saw a new Vega 2 trademark. And over the past couple of days, we've seen another leak over at Red Gaming Tech, suggesting that they'd call it V2. Radeon V2. V2? Like the World War II V2 rocket? I don't think so, guys. But in his same article, Usman over at WCCF, he also speculates, probably being the keyword here, that the consumer GPU will be Vega 2 as well. So there's definitely been one or two sources pointing towards the release of a new Vega consumer 7 nanometer GPU. But my choice in what to believe was made for me. If somebody leaks me information and I don't believe a part of it, then I should probably disbelieve all of it. If I believe one part of a leak, I may as well believe it's all true, rather than say, trusting half of it and not trusting the other half. My Ryzen leak source said that Consumer Vega 7 nanometer was cancelled in favour of Navi, and that three Navi GPUs will be announced at CES. Two entry-level Navi 12 cards and one mid-range Navi 10 card. Now, let me say that my source has far more information on CPU compared to GPU specifics, and that was made clear to me. I was, however, told that Consumer 7 nanometer Vega did have production ramped up at some point, as AMD were concerned about having nothing to compete versus Turing throughout their entire stack. However, with Turing falling a little bit short in rasterization performance, the need for a rushed Vega 20 consumer part was lessened. Performance of the 7nm Vega part would have come in between the RTX 2080 and 2080 Ti, which is also what they're saying over at Red Gaming Tech, although instead of the RTX 2080, they've used the 1080 Ti. But my leak suggested it would still have been losing money because of the high, high cost of high bandwidth memory too. But if production had started and had ramped up, AMD could be left with a few thousand parts that need shifting. And Red Gaming Tech says that there will be apparently 20,000 units available for launch and an additional 40,000 units made later on, depending on demand. So if you put all that together, if AMD had ramped up production of Vega, they could have ended up with a few low 10,000 of cards. That's still a lot of money that they would like to recoup. So yeah, possibility there, based on the information that I just gave you. We'll see about that one, but I don't think so. I think this whole 7 nanometer Vega 2 thing is a red herring, designed to keep your eyes off of the real leak. And of course I believe the real leak to be my leak, and I believe that they will announce Navi in some capacity. There is however an issue there in that AMD have just recently released the RX 590. These new Navi cards are going to be vastly more compelling than that part. And when I'm faced with a dilemma like this though, I like to dig into it, see what I can find to justify what is otherwise a pretty dodgy looking leak regarding Navi. And I think what's likely happened here is that AMD were already committed to launching the RX 590 at the end of 2018. Such a decision would have been taken months earlier, remember. But after Navi's come back from TSMC, looking better than expected, according to Fudzilla in October, that's why that situation has arisen. The 590 looks bad because Navi's looking better than expected. It may also be coming earlier than expected too. If Fudzilla were told in October, then AMD could have had the chips in September. In fact, at the end of August, Mark Papermaster in a corporate blog said this, AMD's next major milestone is the introduction of our upcoming 7 nanometer product portfolio, including the initial products with our second generation Zen 2 CPU core and our new Navi GPU architecture. Our work with TSMC on their 7 nanometer node has gone very well and we have seen excellent results from early silicon. And we also saw Mark say at Next Horizons, And it's uh, resulted in an excellent start for us. We already have several designs back and doing extremely well in our labs. 
in our first seven nanometer product. Several seven nanometer designs back from TSMC. And as I mentioned a few minutes ago, I talked about silicon steppings or silicon revisions in that recent Epic video. In that video, I also stated that 7 nanometer Vega would likely launch as A1 silicon and Zen 2 as B1. 7 nanometer Vega launching as A1 silicon was pretty much confirmed in a Linux driver over at Pharonix, and that was six weeks ago. As a reminder of this whole silicon revision thing, the lower the letter and number, the earlier the chip came back from manufacturing. So A0 chips are first, followed by A1, A2, then maybe a B0 to fix a bigger issue before launch. In most cases, chips will need one or two extra revisions before they are ready for mass production. Remember Zen 1? That launched as B-stepping. It looks also like Zen 2 is going to launch at B-stepping, either B0 or B1, and now Vega launching A1 instead of A0, which would have been the first chips back. But you also understand that if A0 Navi comes back performing great in September, AMD don't sit around twiddling their thumbs wondering when it's best to put it into mass production. They go ahead and do that instantly. If that was in September, or even in October, when Fudzilla caught wind of it, the graphics cards are on the shelves in March or April. Six months is about the turnaround time for that. From final silicon to cards on the shelves has generally taken around six months. That's what we saw with Polaris when they demonstrated that at CES in January 2016, to launch in June 2016. AMD aren't going to hold back better cards if they have them, but they also won't be cancelling orders from their add-in board partners for RX 590s. March or April next year is four or five months after the RX 590 launched. It's not like it was the next day. And on a similar topic to cancelled orders, last month Lisa Su said at a recent technology conference, when talking about the high levels of unsold GPUs, Beyond the fourth quarter, I would expect a similarly depressed graphics channel selling in the first quarter of 2019. We also know Nvidia has huge numbers of unsold graphics cards right now. All of this has been caused by the perfect storm of crypto bursting and the current generation just not being all that compelling from a price performance perspective. There is no better time for AMD to be launching the lower and mid-range Navi cards at prices that make sense. So basically, I expect Navi to launch as A0 or A1 silicon within the next three or four months. That is the low end and the mid-range cards that I first revealed in my leak. The high end stuff comes later in 2019. As far as what we'll see at CES goes, the same goes for Navi as goes for Ryzen. AMD clearly has working parts in hand that they can demonstrate. Of course they do. So I expect to see demos with AMD talking up the value proposition against the RTX 2070. Here's the thing, if AMD only shows their new cards matching the RTX 2070, people are of course going to say, Navi is another fail, it can only match the 2070. What about the 2080 Ti and the Titan RTX? But if Navi, the RX 3080, can match the RTX 2070 in some games, then AMD can perhaps show a Ryzen 5 3600X? and an RX 380 up against a 9900K and the an RTX 2070 and say, look, we are the same performance as Intel and Nvidia at half the price. And this is another major reason why the branding has changed to 3000 series for both the CPU and GPU to tie in Ryzen and Radeon for the OEMs. Right, so to finish this one off, something I haven't done in a while actually, and it's a competition. But Salvo Studios are giving away one of their S401 cases and also some custom acrylic side panels for one lucky winner. And the competition's open to anybody worldwide. So I'll put the link to this in the video description below and the winner will be chosen at random in a couple of weeks time. And that's it. Also note though that the S401 is on sale down from $165 to $130. And that's lasting through December the 31st. So by the time this video is out, there's not going to be much time left to get one at this price. So feel free to check those out. And also, the best of luck in the competition. I'm done with this one. And yep, I'm well aware that most of what I've said in this video goes against current expectations elsewhere in the tech press. But if I'm in for a penny with this leak, I am in for a pound. Whether that confidence was misplaced, we'll soon find out. But only a few days ago, in an interview at the Consumer Technology Association, 
AMD's Lisa Su again. When asked if she could give a sneak peek of what she will be discussing during her CES 2019 keynote, replied with, Last but certainly not least, we will be making some exciting announcements about our next generation products. AMD has the CES keynote for the first time in their history. With the world watching on, do you really think they're going to waste that opportunity talking about 12 nanometer APUs? I hope you all have a great remaining holiday period, and I'll catch you later, guys, in 2019.